Although the term genius or brilliant is overused in show business, I think in Neil Simon's case, it's well-deserved. He's had some of the great hits on Broadway and in movies and in television series, The Odd Couple, The Sunshine Boys, uh, Barefoot in the Park, the list is endless. His latest movie is called Goodbye Girl. In it are Richard Dreyfuss and Neil Simon's wife in real life, Marsha Mason. We're going to show you some clips from the movie and parts of my interview with Richard Dreyfuss and Neil Simon. It's a, a great movie, very enjoyable, and I think you'll see why. Let's look at this first clip. Make it fast. My husband is sleeping. Hi. I, I, I think there's been some kind of mistake. I sublet this apartment from this friend of mine, Tony DeForest. He lives here. That'll be news to my husband, Charlie. You look a little confused. Can I talk to your husband? He'll be at the 37th precinct at 9 o'clock in the morning. Charlie D'Agostino, homicide. Good night. We're in trouble, right? We're not in trouble. We have our rights. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. What's the other tenth? Shut up. Is that the last tenth? Go to bed. I will handle this. Hello. I just called the 37th precinct. There is no Charles D'Agostino in Homicide. Then I called Rita Scott, an old actress friend of mine, who was in The Merchant of Venice this year, where they have a popular Tony DeForest. Rita told me all about this girl that Tony's living with, a certain Paula McFadden, a former dancer, and a ten-year-old daughter, Lucy. She also told me that the apartment in question is leased in the name of Tony DeForest. She knows this for a fact, because she used to live with Tony, the smoothie, prior to Paul and Lucy. Now, can we continue this conversation in a drier room, Ms. McFadden? You got problems? Take it up with the housing authority. Don't hang up! We have to talk this out. And I am in no condition, financial or health-wise, to look for a hotel in the pouring rain, you know? I mean, if there's any such thing as the 78th Street flu, I think I've got it. Why don't you take a shot in a convenient place? Five minutes! That's all I'm asking! What is it? Now look, I, in about 30 seconds we're gonna get cut off. Mr. McFadden, my number is 873-5261. It's a flooded booth on Amsterdam Avenue. If you have any compassion in your heart whatsoever... I'm trying to work it out, operator! Any compassion you always have, you'll call me back. 873-5261. That number again is 873-5261. Oh. Hello, thank you. Five minutes. The scene that we have seen that uh, the director, Herb Ross, and I talked about is, is the old, one of the early scenes in the movie, you're in the rain booth, uh, in, in the phone booth when it's raining. Rain booth, that's a good term. Mm -hmm. Was that a difficult scene to do? No. I said to him that I thought you should have been more angry to have arrived in town late at night, have a lease on an apartment, and you can't get in. He said, well, we kept him a little, he was trying to get in. Did you have any dispute about the way you were doing it? No, we had one, I mean, when I say dispute, there were different ways. Yeah. When we walked, worked through the two weeks of rehearsal before the shooting, all of that was dispensed with, and there was never a dispute. There was a time maybe where you can play the reality of a situation of a guy coming in from out of town, da -da -da -da, or you can play the, that along with the obligation of the genre, which is a romantic comedy, right. so that you leaven the reality with that element. I have had enough. I am not getting kicked out of the same lousy apartment twice. I will give you two minutes to think it over before I yell rape. Will you wait a second? I hope you are thinking because I am counting. Do me the courtesy of hearing me out, please. You are not the only one who can scream rape, you know? <laughs> we are both in a bind, the two of us. And I think the only practical solution is that we share the apartment. I accept. What? I accept. I may be stubborn, but I'm not stupid. You mean it? I have a daughter who goes to school, and I have to start looking for a job. You have a key. I would have to stand guard all day long to keep you out. I accept. You win. Get your bags. You get the small bedroom. What the hell am I getting myself into, huh? I reached a certain point when I said, I cannot progress any further in this medium, writing for other television shows. And what I have to do is start writing personal statements. And so the first personal statement I, I wrote about was uh, my own breaking away from, uh, from the family in Come Blow Your Horn, which was the first play. Uh, and I stuck pretty close to very familiar subjects in the early plays. Barefoot in the Park was about my own um, beginning in marriage, the, the first week of marriage and uh, the problems one goes through. The art couple was based on 
a true incident between my brother and uh, uh, a friend of his who lived in California trying to cut back on alimony, and they moved in <laughs> lived together. together yeah. And uh, my brother was cooking meals, and his friend Roy Gerber would uh, uh, bring two girls over for dinner <laughs> and come a half hour late and spoil Danny's pot roast. <laughs> and uh, so that became the odd couple. But finding that to be very successful where people... I mean, two women living together could be the odd couple. Right. So everybody could sort of relate to that. The play was very popular in Japan, so um, it crossed over the barriers of cultures. And so I've tried pretty much to stick to that. I've gone off in other directions. I wrote The Good Doctor, which was Chekhov short stories, and God's Favorite, which is a contemporary telling of the Book of Job. They were not as, as successful as when I stay in the area of uh, human behavior. Hey, that's good. You're terrific with words. You always pick the right ones. Words are the canvas of an actor. His lips are his brushes, and his tongue, the colors of the spectrum. And when he speaks, he paints portraits. Classy. He's very classy. Kid's got a good eye. Not like Tony. He wasn't a classy actor. He was just, you know, uh, sexy. <laughs> you don't think I'm sexy? <laughs> are you kidding? What do you know? You're 10 years old. In three years, I'm going to drive you out of your bird. What I try to do is uh, write about life, N not the exotic life so much. I, I don't think I write in, in other genres, in other uh, areas that, that people know little about. I try to find some common denominator of experience that we have all gone through that people can relate to. Uh, I guess the best example is when... Uh, people will come out of the theater and say to me, how did you know about my life? That's me and my mother or, or whatever. Well, he does indeed tell us about ourselves, and that is his genius, that he's able to tell us about who we are and what we are and what we hope to be, our failures and our foibles, and do it entertainingly and funny. Goodbye Girl does that very well. I think you'll enjoy it very much. Neil Simon, let's call him a genius. We'll be right back.